that pain in your legs, that pain in your lungs, that can only last so long. The intent behind run one more was do something you thought you couldn't do. At some point, the run's got to end. Everyone has these stigmas about yourself, like, oh, I can never be a runner, I don't have the body. Our mission is to like create a community with you guys and help people push past and break past those limits of what they thought was possible. My name is Nick Lede. I'm from Topeka, Kansas, and this is my first time running an awesome marathon. It's good, everyone. My name is Michael Sinier, and I am from the island of Saipan, and I'll be running the full marathon here with the VPN team. Hey, how's it going, guys? My name is Alan. I am born and raised here in Round Rock, Texas, actually. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be running my first half marathon, inspired by Nick himself. I'm Megan Fisher. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, and I'm running the 5K. My name is Severia Giordano. I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania, and I'm running the half marathon. I'm Jade, and this is Mario. Doing it, a half marathon tomorrow. And we're from Denver, Colorado. Hey, I'm Christine. I was born in Dallas, moved overseas most of my life, running the half tomorrow, so super excited as well. Uh, my name is Alfredo. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and I'm doing the 5K tomorrow. Talk some tips for like race day after this. Me and Joe will get up on the mic. I don't know if you guys saw, but Dakota Meyer just flew in on his, on his helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give some tips on on running this marathon because I've learned a lot from fucking up the last two pretty well. <laughs> to you know, learning through Ironman and what I'm gonna do tomorrow. So I'll give some tips nutrition wise and and like in training wise, mindset wise, um, and then we'll do a two mile warm up all together. He your legs fresh, a little shake out run, and we'll just hang out for a few more hours and just talk. All right, so the, the intent behind run one more was do something you thought you couldn't do. Like, anyone else has a tattoo on their arm here? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Funny, I got it. Uh, do you got it? Why don't you raise your hand? Yeah. <laughs> the whole run one more thing is like push past what you thought you couldn't do previously. And after talking to some of you guys so far, I'm sure I'll talk to you more after this, it's like you realize that like, oh, so we'll see in maybe me and the team go from like bodybuilding training to this Ironman prep to, to marathon endurance and tomorrow I'm trying to qualify for Boston, right? It's like everyone has these stigmas about yourself. It's like, oh, I can never be a runner. I don't have the body. Or I can't, I can't do this because I'm not this person. I don't have this. Well, no shit, you can do whatever you want to do, right? So like when it comes to tomorrow's like race, whether you're doing a 5K, half marathon, full marathon, you're still pushing yourself. So like when it comes to tomorrow, it's like going as hard as possible. Right? Like at, at some point, the run's gotta end. It's like that pain in your legs, that pain in your lungs, and that can only last so long. For me, it's like, I don't wanna just do a marathon once and never do anything again. It's constantly, what's the next thing? Well, first it was the Ironman, and now it's qualify for Boston, and then it's gonna be an ultra marathon. It's, it's keep pushing like what you're doing next to keep constantly improving and getting better. All right, so like use that mindset for this run tomorrow. Here's the cool thing too about tomorrow. The BPN team has the biggest team in the Austin Marathon. There's 30,000 people running the marathon tomorrow. We beat like Indeed. Indeed, who like hosts job findings and searches and stuff. Last two years, they've had the biggest teams. And this year we beat them. And they're probably pretty salty about that because they have like thousands <laughs> of employees, right? And they're all based in Austin. Like how many of you guys came from outside of Austin? Yeah, I talked to people coming from Alaska, Indiana, New York, Idaho. Idaho. <laughs> Anyone from outside the country? Where are you coming from? Canada. That's awesome. What part? Your first time in Texas? Yes. That's awesome. There's gonna be more Run One More T-shirts out there 
and probably like anything else. You're gonna see people running with you. So like when you see those people running with you, like we're we're, we're running as a team, even though we're running separately. Like we uh, we're representing BPN, we're rep representing the Go One More mentality, the brand. But no, tomorrow's gonna be fun, guys. It's a really good race. It's uh, it's really well put together. So here's like here's my my recommendations for for today and tomorrow going to the race. Like I said, I've I've learned this through messing up on a lot of different things. It's like who's been hydrating today? All right, so. Today, try to get some electrolytes in, whether that's like a Gatorade um, or you go find some electrolyte tabs somewhere like a GNC or even like an HEB grocery store. Try to get, you should be hydrating, you want like a, maybe a gallon of water today, but just don't drink water. You want some electrolytes with that so you're not cramping up tomorrow. Go one more on three. <laughs> one, two, three. Go one more! All right, guys. So wrapping up the the day before the marathon, the run one more challenge. And like I've talked about, the the intent of the run one more challenge was to get people out of their comfort zone, build this family, this community around the BPN brand, where it's like it doesn't matter if you've never done any running at all. We'll sign up for the 5K. If you've never done a half marathon, sign up for the half marathon. If you've never done a full marathon, sign up for the full marathon. Like, like do something that you've never done that is completely out of your comfort zone, but do it as this team. Like, be a part of this family as this team. And, and we're there for you to do it. We provided the resources, we provided the, the training programs and this community and this, this, this platform. And it, to see it all come together and everyone be here was truly amazing. Like, it was awesome to hear people's stories and hear the transformations and the progress people have made. And that's what it's all about. Like that's why, that's what keeps fueling our purpose of, of building this brand, building this community and helping other people reach their goals. So it was a great experience. It was, it was awesome moving into tomorrow, which you know, it's, today was light, today was conversational. And now tonight kind of shifts focus where it's, it's straight dedication and, and focus into tomorrow's race. Because I have to be 100% dialed in to, to hit this race head on to attempt to qualify for the Boston Marathon. Sub three hour marathon, 650 minute per mile pace or faster. That's what we have to do tomorrow. And that's the focus. Currently 5.18 a.m. At 4 a.m. I was up at 3.45. 4 a.m. I had my breakfast which was uh, one cup of oatmeal, a banana, about two tablespoons of honey. I had my strong greens, strong reds, strong malty, strong joints. And um, I will be sipping on, I drank coffee to go to the bathroom. I went to the bathroom successfully, so yeah, we're off to a good start. On the way to the race, I'm gonna be sipping on uh, 20 grams of carbs in the form of cluster dextrin and uh, electrolytes, which is about 350 milligrams of sodium total. And that is the nutrition plan as of right now moving into. I've been listening to This Will Destroy You all morning. I'm in the zone. I'm ready. So let's go. Let's get it. Yeah. Anyone eat any goose? I got one. Yeah. Anyone? Yes, please. All right, I'll just take this at mile four oh. and then grab one at mile nine. Okay. All right, we got salted caramel, vanilla oh, yeah. bean, triple berry. I didn't sleep that well. <laughs> all right, here we go. Here we go. Top them off. Yeah, them yeah. off. Thank you, sir. I am. Secret sauce. President. Much better. Oh, it's Oh, it's a Rachel, did you just buy this because it says bolt? <laughs>
I got a little bit of nerves kicking in and with, with this it's with the Iron Man looking back at what previously the Iron Man was that one thing where it's like alright let's, let's, let's hold this consistent pace we have this engine built and let's have a good race but this one's like alright I gotta hold 650 for less than three hours which is gonna be tough it's gonna be difficult the preparation was put in the work was put in the training program was followed and now it's just getting the fucking work done and that's what today is so let's get it at some point, the run's got to end. So to, man, I don't, how do I say this? I did not qualify for Boston at the Austin Marathon. My official time was three hours and 24 minutes. And I'm not mad about it. I'm really not. Uh, I, I, I literally, I ran as hard as I could on the course today. And it was a, it's a tough course. Like, it is a hard course. It's very, very hilly. It's like this. And um, the first like 10 miles, I held like my 640 minute per mile pace, felt solid. As soon as I started hitting the hills, uh, I started cramping up. Like I never cramp up in training, I never do. The only time I ever cramp up is on the Austin Marathon because of how the hills are. <clears throat> so I knew going into this, I chose a very hard course to try and qualify for. With that being said, nothing changes. You know, the, the goal is still, I am going to qualify for Boston. So, the next race is at the end of April. It is the Eugene, Oregon Marathon. And, you know, go back and going into this next week, training continues. Training continues to attempt to qualify for Boston, get faster, get stronger, build my endurance, build my aerobic base. But overall, I'm happy with the race today. It was, uh, as always, a humbling experience with the hills. And I shaved off 50 minutes 50 minutes from my last marathon last year, my last, my last Austin Marathon in 2019. So that by itself is it's pretty massive. But I think the, and someone said this to me, one of the people that was in the Run One More Challenge group, someone that did the, the half marathon, their first half marathon ever, they came up to me after the race was over and they said, like, you know, how, how do you do Nick? And I said, you know, 324, didn't qualify, but I'll qualify eventually. And he said something that really stuck with me. He's like, you know what, man? The, no, no matter if you qualified today or not, what really matters is that you brought all these people together. And all these people came from all across the country, outside of the country, like we talked about yesterday. And they stepped outside of their comfort zone and did something that was difficult for them. Some of these people did their first 5K, their first half marathon, their full, first full marathon. And bringing everyone together and doing that and pushing people outside of their comfort zone yeah, and that's what makes me feel really good after today. So I left everything on the table during today's race. Didn't qualify, but I will qualify eventually. So the journey continues. This is not the end of it. This is just the beginning.
we are at Mesquite Creek, which is our favorite bar, like downtown Georgetown in the square. Uh, so enjoying like my celebratory drink after uh, after the marathon. But I wanted to talk about my time splits from earlier today. I talked about like what kind of happened on the course and why it happened. So like, looking over my stats, like, the first 5K, 641 minute per mile pace, I was feeling solid, I was holding it strong. Um, at the 10K mark, I was at a, a 629 minute per mile pace. So at this point there were, and you know, we started off the course, it goes up South Congress, it's a, a gradual incline, and then we hit some declines where I could pick up my pace. The first 15K, I was at a 711 pace, and this is where we started to hit some hills. And from like 15K to like pretty much the end, except for the last like five miles, it was, like I said, it was, it was very, very hilly. It was constant ups and downs. There were some steep climbs. And like my first uh, like 20K, 729 minute per mile pace. And after that, I was in the eights for eight minute per mile pace. And then at the 40K mark, I was at a 920 minute per mile pace. Um, so like my overall average pace was 748 minute per mile. And kind of what happened was after that, like, Kind of after the 20K mark, um, from the hills, my legs started cramping up. And like I said, I never cramp up, but they started cramping up after that, that 20K mark. And uh, it really, it, it just demolished my pace. And because I was cramping up from the hills, I was trying to combat that. I had to like stop a few times to like rub out my legs because they seized up completely. But that really demolished my pace. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm happy with my performance for the course that it was. But I do believe that on a flatter course, like the one in Oregon at the end of April, I'll have a much better time, a more consistent time, much more consistent time, because that's the goal, right? Like the goal is to to run a 6.50 minute per mile pace and hold that consistently throughout the race, because with these inclines, with these hills, it messes with your heart rate, which then ultimately messes with your speed, messing with your minute per mile pace, and then your overall time. So like, I guess the strategy going into this race might not have been the best because of the hills itself. And I went out fast and the hills hit me really hard. But I can't think of another way I would have would have strategically hit the course to combat these hills. But that's just going over kind of what my pace was looking like on the, on the course itself, what happened. But I'm telling you man, the Austin Marathon, the course is, it's, it's brutal, it's hilly, it's not flat. And uh, that will affect heart rate, which affects your legs, which affects your pace, and that's what's happened. But uh, overall, a great experience with the team. We're running one more challenge. I had a blast, but we're going to get this, uh, this Boston qualifier. So cheers to you guys who came out, supported the journey. The journey continues, and uh, we'll see you as we continue to improve.